Hey guys, I know a few of y'all have already seen this video, but most of y'all have not. For some reason, it's not showing up on the channel and people are saying the link's not working. I don't know what's going on with it, but I decided to just go ahead and take the video down. I'm gonna shorten the video up into sections and repost it, but it is not substituting for new content coming. We've got a Steampunk Island that's coming up next and right here in front of me, I'm not gonna show you yet, but right here in front of me, I am working on a gamer bed that has a lift wall that comes out of it. It's gonna have LED lights and a bunch of other cool stuff in it. So those videos are coming up. Like I said, this isn't substituting for videos. We just, for some reason, it's just not getting seen. So we'll just do it this way. Hope you enjoy. So how many of y'all live with someone that makes it sound so simple for you to build anything that exists in this world? Or are you like Emily here? Leave me a comment below, let me know. Hey, what's that? You can make that a hell of a lot better. Just need some wood. And a welder? The metal? Hmm. You might be able to do that. So we went to this awesome huge flea market in Kenton, Texas and came across this old rustic industrial island that you can tell had lived a very rough life, but it had character and thought it'd be something really neat we could fix up. Unfortunately, they wanted $1,800 for it. At first we thought they were out of their mind and then we started doing a little bit of research. And then of course Emily's right there saying, oh, you could build something like that, but make it way cooler. So it kept rolling around in my head and I started doing a little bit more research to see how much these industrial islands go for. And it's actually quite a bit of money as you can see here. And a lot of these have like a $900 shipping charge on top of the price that you see here. So I did what any normal person would do and watched about two hours of YouTube videos on how to weld and what I needed to weld and then put it on my Christmas wish list to Santa. That probably speaks for itself, but I'm going to cover it anyway. I have no idea what I'm doing, so please do not do as I do. And if you're a professional welder or welder by trait, I apologize for the eye twitch you're about to get. I'm going to be learning on this piece. It may turn out horrible, but we are going to try anyway. Wish me luck. Now, I started off this build by heading down to Short Iron Store here in Hazlitt, Texas. This store is amazing. I just had a vision inside my head of what I wanted to build, but I didn't know technical names for stuff. I didn't know what gauge thickness I needed. I didn't know if it needed hot or cold rolled. And a lot of these places, they just want you to come in, put in an order, and that's it. Short Iron Store in Hazlitt, Texas actually let me walk around the store and buy metal just by visually looking at it and saying, hey, that's what I need right there. Another cool thing about Short Iron Store here in Hazlitt is they do cuts for free. So if you want to go in there and buy a 20 foot pipe and need it cut into two inch pieces, you just come back later and pick up all your two inch pieces with no extra charge. I definitely wanted to give them a shout out on my channel just because their customer service was amazing and they really made this possible for me. All right, I'm starting off this build with a 10 foot section of butcher block that I purchased at Lowe's. We're only gonna use about eight feet of it and I've got an idea for the remaining two feet. Man, let me tell you, this thing is heavy. All right, first thing first, I'm figuring out placement for the legs. I'm gonna go ahead and build the legs onto the top. I just feel like this is gonna be the easiest way of doing it for me. I 
I was worried about drilling too deep, so I'm just going to add some painter's tape to my drill bit just to make sure I don't go all the way through the top. Like I said at the beginning, this is a 10 foot butcher block. We only need eight feet of it, and I've got an idea for the other two feet. Now I'm gonna widen the holes out for the threaded insert. I'm only gonna go the depth of the insert, so I'm going to do the tape trick again. I'm going to go ahead and super glue in these threaded certs so I don't have to worry about them backing out whenever someone removes the bolt. So it's apparent very quickly that the plates that I bought are just a little bit too small. I tried putting it back on with just removing the washers and hoping to still get four bolts in, but I'm just going to put the leg at the corner of the piece and use three bolts. I want this island to be countertop height at 36 inch, so I'm just going through figuring out the measurements of my plate, my top, and the wheel. The wheel was 5 inch, I can't remember what the top and the plate came out to. I have a metal chop saw on order, but it hasn't got here yet, so I'm going to be trying to do these cuts by hand for now. Now I'm just going through and making three more identical legs. I made sure the tabletop was level when I set everything up. Now I'm just making sure that the legs are plumb. I'm keeping the levels attached to the leg while I weld just to make sure nothing moves on me. Still got some technique to learn, but I think it's penetrating pretty good. I might try to turn the heat up just a little bit more. Draw on here. Keep going, keep trying to get better. Now I'm just going to clamp some steel pieces to the legs to make sure they stay squared up together and keep everything plumb for me. Adding the plates to the top for the wheels to be welded to. I could tell my cut was off just a little bit, so I'm just going to hammer this plate out until I get it to where I want it and then weld it in place. Now I'm just making sure the wheels are level and going to weld them in place. Doing the same thing on the other side.
Now I'm adding the cross bracing. One of them I'm going to do laying flat, another one I'm going to do standing up. I know standing up long ways is the stronger way to put it in there, but I'm not sure yet how my drawers are gonna work out on this piece, so I wanna have both options. Now I'm just using two identical length pieces of wood for my placement for the crossbars. I originally was thinking about just putting the crossbars between the legs, which would have been the easy way of doing it, but I want a little more of a custom look, so I am going to cut these so it looks like they are built into the legs, kind of wrapping around the outside. That may sound a little confusing right now, but you'll see what I mean here in a second. I figured out very quickly cleaning off whatever junk they put on this metal to keep it from rusting makes for a way better weld. Now I'm just cutting a 45 degree notch on the end and beating it around and welding it in place so it all looks like it's one solid piece. The last time I visited my grandparents place I ended up finding these old treadle sewing machine parts in their metal junk pile. So I decided I'm going to incorporate these into this build. Now I'm just building some framing around it. I'm gonna kinda of do the same thing I did on the side pieces. I'm gonna add a little 45 degree notch and then just hammer the metal over and weld it in place. I'm hoping this adds for a little bit more custom look. I know it's a lot more work and it's probably a lot more advanced than I should be getting into, but it doesn't hurt to try. Now to mount these in place, I am going to use threaded rod just for a little more of that custom industrial feel. Clamp it board in place so I can make sure everything stays squared up where I want it. Now whenever I'm cutting these threaded rods, I like to put the nuts on first. There's a big possibility cutting it like this could mess up the threads and then you'll never get a nut on it. So I like to put the nuts on first and then I can back the nut off and it'll correct the threads if they're boogered up. So all I do is go through and work the nuts out until they fit in my gap snug and then I weld them in place.
So I'm welding in nuts to kind of look like, almost like big industrial rivets is what I'm hoping for. So I had this idea in mind for some of the angle bracing on this piece. I'm gonna go ahead and tack these angle pieces together just so they don't move on me. The hardest part of doing this is actually getting everything symmetrical and identical. So this is gonna help in that process. Now you can kind of see what I was envisioning. Unfortunately, I don't have a torch yet to be able to heat up this metal and try to bend it to the shape I want, so I'm having to be creative. Now I'm adding bracing for the expanded metal shelf we're going to put in here. I decided to take some of the leftover expanded metal and put them behind some of these openings. I think it gives it a really cool look. Just adding some decorative nuts and bolts in. Now I'm just making a smaller version of those decorative angle pieces for the ends. I'm gonna get down here with him. Come here, Boston. Come here, Boston. Come here, bud. Come here, yeah, here. Yeah, you're okay. He knows shake, too. Oh, do you? Shake? Shake? Good boy. Look at you. Oh, sweet boy. Sweet boy. So Boston is, you think, two? Two and a half? We fixed? Hey boss, come here. He gets along with other big dogs. Oh. You're pretty boy. <laughs> Sweet boy. Sweet boy. Oh, is that a good spot? Is that a good spot? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good boy.
Yeah, hopefully we can get some of these guys adopted out, if not at least get some dog food and some yeah. maybe.